Well, what do you say we actually start forging some parts for our window grill? Got the drawing behind us. There's really only one tool that you're going to need at this stage of the game besides your hammer, anvil, forge, the, the usual stuff. One special tool we haven't talked about too much previously and that's a hook ruler. If you go back and look at one of my more recent videos not dealing specific, specifically with the grill, you'll see that I made a hook ruler, explain how to use one, and that's the tool we're going to need. So if you're actually trying to follow along and build one of these yourself, before you get in the shop to, to do this step, you might want to go ahead and make the hook ruler. So this is all the hook ruler is. It's just a, a bar with a hook on the end that I can use for measuring. And because this is easier to do with this laying flat, but easier for you to see and to film standing up, I stuck a little piece of magnet on here that I can set the end of my hook ruler on. And I can line the end up, the inside of the hook ruler with the end of the bar on my drawing. And I hope you can see around me. And I'm going to make a mark at every element. I know that the end of the piece is just inside the hook. That's where we want the, the corner that we're going to start. And I'm going to lay out each of my pickets and the far end. And those are all of my critical measurements for these horizontal bars that are going to hold everything together. When I've got my marks made, I want to square across with a square so I can measure from either side of my hook rule. If you're a woodworker and have used the term story stick, this is really the same thing. And this tells me where all of my half inch pickets are going to go. There's five of them. And it tells me where the end of my bar is. Now when we did our full size layout, we drew this little element here. This is a half inch square bar, or excuse me, five eighths square bar. I don't know why I keep saying half inch. These are half inch. Um, five eighths square bar here, and I want an inch and a half from the inside here to this inside. And this is just an arbitrary number that I decided I wanted to make. So I have laid out my second hook ruler so that it will measure those. Now this is not drawn to scale. My hook ruler is correct. So I know that this is the outside bar is to here. My length of this leg is here and this will be my inside bar so my far corner from here to here goes right here to this mark on the hook rule. This is just a second shorter hook rule so I can just get this exactly the way I want it. Now we're going to complicate things just a hair more we know that this bar needs to be 33 inches to here. We know that we want an inch and a half here to here plus 5 eighths plus 5 eighths. So that's 5 eighths, 5 eighths, an inch and a half is going to be 12 eighths. So that's 22 eighths of an inch. Or one and three quarters inches. No, two and three quarters inches. See, this is why you write this stuff down and do your math out. It makes life a lot easier. So 24 eighths would have been an even three inches. So two and three quarters of inch from here to here plus our 33, and we're going to do this on each end, so that's really five and a half inches, plus 33 is 38 and a half inches. Now if we cut our bar 38 and a half inches, what's going to happen? We're going to lose material here because this upset corner, the upset takes material. We need to add material into this area. Now the general rule of thumb is one half the thickness of the material out of each side. So we're going to need half a 5 eighths here, half a 5 eighths there, half a 5 eighths here, and half a 5 eighths there. 
although we haven't factored this in yet. So that's going to be another another ten eighths of an inch to get all this stuff just right, plus whatever we want to decide we want this to be before we taper it out, which is probably about an inch, and by the time we taper it'll be about two inches long. So we'll allow an inch for that. So we are 38 and a half. We need another 10 eighths of material, which would be one and a quarter inches, if we're doing this more simply, plus an inch and a half there. And this has to be doubled, so that's one of the, the same thing at each end. And I'm thinking out loud here, so I'm sorry if I'm confusing you. If I took the time to do the math and then explain it, it would be easier, but this is actually the process that goes through in my head. So that's really two and a half inches total for that, and three inches total for this. So 38 and a half. Okay, I quit rambling and, and did this real quick to, to make sure I'm right, and I'm pretty sure this is correct, but it doesn't hurt to check it. And if your grill is a different size, this has to be your number, not my number. So I'm going with 44 inches, and this is an estimate at this point. Until I do this corner, I don't know if I'm right. So a good way to do this is a short test piece, or we can cut it 44 inches and do it and see if we're right, and if we're wrong, we'll cut another one and we'll do it correctly. If it's just a little bit off, there are ways we can make some adjustments. Now I have my 5 8 square bar. I've cut it 44 inches, which is my estimated length. But instead of starting from the end, I actually started from the middle and went out. So this is my 33 inch from the other side based on a middle measurement. So that's 16 and a half inches from the center. Because where this ends up is much less important. If I end up with a mistake out here, I can draw it out further. I can trim it off. It's somewhat variable and it's, my measurement was arbitrary to start with. Now I know I need half the thickness of the material to allow for my upset. So I don't want to actually start my corner right there. I would rather start my corner 5 sixteenths. So this is where my center punch mark will go. Now my next measurement that I wanted was going to be an inch and a half on the inside plus the 5 eighths. This is where it kind of gets confusing if you don't draw it out and look, look at exactly at the, the drawing. So essentially I'm going to be 5 eighths plus my inch and a half plus another 5 eighths. So it's a total of an inch and a quarter plus my inch and a half. So 2 and 3 quarters inches. to the next mark and because I've already allotted for my my half here that should give me my half here so my corner should actually end up being pushed in from there hopefully I'm right we'll find out the other thing I'm going to do real quick because I got to do this more often than just this I'm going to go ahead and mark these measurements on my hook rule just lightly so I know where they are and I can come down to the other end then and a reference off of this and I can make corresponding marks on the other end so I've done my layouts I know that seems a little bit confusing do your own math, figure it out, draw it out full size if you need to to get it exactly right, and then do a test piece. See if your assumptions are correct, see if your measurements are correct. I've actually cut both bars, I think I've got everything right, so I cut both bars, I laid out both bars together, and I have center punched both bars. It's better to do the test piece first, and this is a test piece. If this doesn't come out right, this one goes in the scrap heap and we start with another one. But I think I've got it right, so we're going to go ahead and go for it. And if it's not right, then, then we'll fix it, and we'll do another one, and that's not a big deal. 
but also for this grill it's not a big deal because this stuff doesn't really have to be that exact so I'm sorry if I confuse you on some of this stuff I gotta think about it out loud too because this really isn't the kind of work I do every day I make tools and hinges mostly and doing grill work and ornamental work is challenging me so you're watching me be challenged right along with you so I hope that doesn't doesn't cause any trouble so let's put this in the fire now in practice what we want is our center punch mark on the side of this piece where we can keep an eye on it as we work and of course if you're moving this around on the fire you might have lost your center punch mark I think that's it And we want to put a gentle bend in there. We've done upset corners before, so this part isn't anything new. I just want to kind of establish where that goes, and now I know where my center punch mark really is. Now you may want to cool this off a little bit so you don't mushroom the edge. Maybe cool it a little bit back from the end. And then we're just going to work that corner just like in our last video and upset square corners. Work from the end. Flip it and work the width. Keep an eye on that center punch mark and try and keep it in the center. That's your critical element right there. And if you got that first center punch mark right, you keep those centered. And then get it hot again. There's no reason to work this thing cold. And it's just a matter of back and forth. Then you might be able to do this in two, three, four heats, but whatever it takes is just whatever it takes. This also does not have to be a super tight outside corner unless you want it to be. I'd kind of like it to be because I think it looks better. You can see that's getting pretty close. And our center punch mark is dead center in the corner. So mostly this last heat will be straightening that up. So unfortunately I forgot to turn the camera on there when I, I did this, but I just worked this and refined that, cleaned it up, made sure it was square, and worked the thickness a little bit because chances are it's upset in this direction too, and that helps bring more material into the corner. I'm going to worry about this element after I get the second corner done. I'm getting so involved with what I'm doing I keep forgetting that there's a camera I need to deal with. So I've bent this. I'm a little long on the top part, so I'm working mostly down at this point. And now my punch mark is back to center. That's just almost done there. That's really about how fat long that takes. I think I'm a little bit long in here. By placing this in the fire with this angle up, I'm really just heating the corner and I'm not going to be messing with my first angle here. So this works out very nicely in the coal fire. That would be a problem in the gas forge. Now 
forget to check your measurement regularly. And try and keep everything square. So are we close? Boy, we are just right on there. It's exactly what I want. I'd like to crisp that up a little bit more. That may shorten this a little bit, but if necessary, I can draw this out through here. Just want a little bit crispier corner right there. I probably shouldn't say crispy. You're all thinking of Colonel Sanders fried chicken right now, aren't you? I should say a sharper square corner. So that's really what I want for these corners. And that one came out right, so my measurement to get this element correct is good. Now we'll see if lengthwise end to end is still good. Really just at this point just trying to get things to look straight and 90 degree corners. So that's what we're after. On both sides our center punch mark is right in the, the corner where we want it. So our layout allowing 50 percent of the thickness, so 5 sixteenths at each leg at each bend. So there was 5 sixteenths here and 5 sixteenths there to guarantee this ended up just right. Well, on here I'm going to knock the corners off very lightly because I think it'll look better in the long run. And not, not the sharp corner we just created here, not this corner, but the corners along the sides. Just a little bit of a chamfer. It's a little bit cold, but for this, it's just fine. Okay. So now I'm going to turn that around and do the other end and see if my overall length is correct or if this was just a, a trial and error piece. But I'm going to let that cool, air cool first. Well, mild steel doesn't harden, it can still stress crack, and I don't want to create a stress riser in one of these sharp corners. Now, before we finish bringing this up to heat, let's stop and think about this a minute. If I bend this end incorrectly, and I'm 180 degrees off of this end, there's nothing I can do to fix this except twist this bar and this bar isn't supposed to be twisted. If it's a round bar you can get away with that because a round bar doesn't show a twist in the round section. But because I want this square I've got to make sure I get this going the right direction. Which means I want this up in the air and I want to bend that down so that when my second bend happens they all line up. So that means I know that I want my punch mark on my right side and that'll be correct. Hope that makes sense. But if you get this wrong you're really going to hate yourself trying to unforge a square upset corner isn't going to be an easy thing and it's probably easier to get a new piece of material and start from scratch. So with the punch marks to my right side When I stop, what I'm doing is I'm double-checking my 
center punch mark to make sure I haven't gone off in some odd direction here. And we just continue on like we have been. As before, this is just back and forth. Things get out of line, straighten them back up. Keep that center punch mark centered in the corner. And try and end up with a nice sharp outside corner and a little bit of a radius on the inside. That's pretty much what we want right there. And I'm pretty happy with that corner. So now we'll do the other quarter. We'll stand it up this way and we'll bend it down that way and that will match our first corner. So, so far we've got it right. Sometimes it's really hard to find that center punch mark. It's where that square center punch does help, but still can't always see it exactly. If you haven't watched my video about square center punch marks, there is a video on that. You can go back and watch it. You notice I use more blows this way because I'm not supported. I'm, I'm trying to push against this with my other hand, so it takes more work to upset in this angle than where I'm supported by the anvil. I get by with a lot less work that way. My center punch mark is down on this leg a little bit, so I can actually do more work up here, which is a little bit easier. Even though I'm working that down more, I want to make sure I keep it fairly square. Yep, that's centered again. I want to keep my 5 8 bar 5 8 thick because it wants to widen out. It'll be a 3 quarter inch bar if you're not careful. Now it's not as sharp a corner as I would like yet, so hopefully we have a little bit more to go, and we do. We can move another eighth of an inch or so before that's down to the size we want. So that's where these hook rules are handy. It's a quick reference. We know this matched this side, so it's very easy to make a match. Doesn't matter anymore what the measurements are. 
because it's the same both ends. And we're that corner's coming up much nicer. It's a little bit extra effort. And try to keep keep the bar under control here. When everything, when this corner is just right, my ideal is that all my angles are just right simultaneously. But there's, there's room to correct some of this stuff. I'm going to check that one more time. Boy, that is just almost perfect. One little light heat and a little bit of tweaking and I think we'll be there. Now when you're worrying about the thickness of this bar, if you upset it a little bit, you can make it a hair shorter if your measurements aren't all coming out just right. And if you draw it out just a little bit, you can make it a hair longer. This one's actually looks a little thin right through here, so I want to upset it just a hair. But I still want to keep my corner right. Check this. Yeah, it looks very good. So I'm going to do that little bit of chamfering that we did on the other end. This is just to take any rough edges off. And we'll fix this when we forge that end. And we'll do that probably as a whole separate video. At this point I'm just lightly chamfering the bar up to about the center point. Then I'll let it cool, I'll turn it around, and do the other end. You don't have to chamfer the bar if you don't want to. I just think it takes some of the raw edge off of it. It also makes it kind of squirrely and makes it bend funny, so you got to straighten it out. But you should be checking everything for straight anyways. So I uh, turned the camera off and didn't make you watch me chamfer edges and, and heat this too badly. I know you like to watch the full process, but when the last 15 minutes look just like the last minute, it can be kind of boring. So I've chamfered that just to, to break the edges and make it look better. And now I want to check this for length. So I'm going to take my hook ruler that I've previously laid out, put it on that end, and I'm going to slide it down to this end and I'm going to check. And what I see here, hopefully you can see that in the camera, is I am about 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch too long. So the question is, am I thrilled with that measurement or am I really disappointed that I'm that much too long? Now think about steel and the properties of steel and what we've been doing and then I'll tell you what my answer is in just a second. Now what I think is happening here, and I'll measure it again in just a second, is something that I learned the hard way. I did a some contract work for another blacksmith. He was making a big railing. He needed a whole bunch of pickets. They had to be exactly the right length or they weren't going to fit right. And so I was very picky about making every single one of these pickets exactly the right length. I delivered this pile of pickets and got paid. And he calls me a week later and he's pretty unhappy with me. 
because every single one of them was too short. Now why were they all too short? I made sure they were just right. The problem is that steel expands when it gets hot. So this, because I've been working the whole length chamfering the edges, could easily be a quarter of an inch longer than it will be when it cools completely. So I'm not in too big a hurry to pass judgment on that measurement until it has completely cooled and I check my measurement on the cooled piece of steel instead of this hot piece of steel. This is still way too hot for me to touch. But I can check this again because it is cooling off and it's going to get closer and closer. And I'm now only about an eighth of an inch off. So I think when this is completely cool, I will be pretty much dead on the money where I want it to be. If it isn't, what are my options? If it shrinks too much, I can draw this out just a little bit in the middle. And, you know, if it's an eighth inch off, that is not enough to throw this in the scrap pile and start over again. You can draw it out, make it a little longer. If it's a little bit too long still, you can heat up someplace probably in the corners and upset a little bit more material into those corners. And you can take that up. If it's a half inch off, you're probably out of luck. You probably need to fix it. Again, for this project, it probably doesn't matter that much because of the way this grill is going to mount in my situation, if it's too big, it'll be just fine. If it's too small, it's just fine. Not a big deal. But this is the time to learn to make it right when it doesn't really matter. So we're going to fuss with it and make it right. Once this cools, we'll measure it again. We'll see if it's the correct length, and we'll figure out what to do with it at that point. But the fact that it's already getting closer to the correct length, and it's cooled way down into a black heat, I think we're going to be very close. If we're off, it's only going to be by about a sixteenth of an inch. And it'll be easy to upset a sixteenth of an inch anywhere in this bar that we feel like doing it. Now, if you are going to punch or slit and drift holes in this, that will affect the length. And you need to do a test piece to see what that changes the length of a piece of material. Because it will change it. And we'll do that maybe in the next video. I'm going to do a little bit more on this subject, just getting these corners right real quick. But in the next video, we'll deal with forging these feet, and we'll deal with how to do a test piece to check to see how much material you gain, lose, or don't change a bit because you punched or slit and drifted holes. And that's a pretty easy procedure to do. But we're going to let this cool so we can get a good measurement. In the meantime, I'm going to start on the other piece, and I'm going to show you another technique for doing a square corner that some people have asked about. So this is an alternative technique that somebody else has out there on YouTube. This is not my invention. I don't do this typically. I've done it before. But it starts just like our last upset corner does, by making a bend right at our 90 degree or excuse me, making a bend right at our center punch. And you want to get that bend fairly accurate because this one is going to be even harder to recover from if you screw it up. So we actually want to bend this all the way over on itself. Again, try to keep that center punch mark dead center where you want it. At this stage you're never going to get it right again. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to draw a little point. Don't draw this out too far. You don't want to thin this part of this at all. You just want to put a point right out here on the end. We're going to get that good and hot to do. Now this is darn near a welding heat, so make sure you don't accidentally forge the parts together to weld them. But what we're going to do is create the sharp point of the corner first. And this definitely works. I have tried this before. And we're upsetting at the same time. You can see back in here, this is getting wider. And when we flatten that back out in a subsequent step, try and keep everything straight, that should... Um, add some of our upset material into our corner. Personally, I don't think this is really that much faster. 
and I think it's a lot less precise because you can't really adjust this once you've made this corner. You can't go back and move it around as easily. So the next step we're going to want to open that up. So let's open that and see what we got. I probably should not have done this on my piece that I want for our project just in case I don't like it. And I think this has its own issues. And I really don't feel like it's that much faster. Now I suggest you watch the other video. He makes this look easier. I think it takes some practice to get it right. And it's not the way I typically do it, so I'm not very practiced at it. But I can see I've got lots of stuff to fix there. And I'm going to mess with this for another heat, but if it doesn't start to look right after that, I'm going to consider this to be not the way I want to do this. If you want to try it, feel free. Now, this is still a lot wider, so I can still thin it out this direction. and get some more mass in here. Now clearly the problem is that I my point I drew out too far. But I also never quite got it to a point, so it was not behaving as I would have liked. Does this work? Yeah, it absolutely works. Is it the way I would want to go normally? No, it is not. Now this is forming a little cold shut down in here, which is one of the problems with trying to bend a corner too sharp too fast. And the typical upset avoids that. If it's just a corner for no, and never going to see stress, that's not a big deal. Because this is going to be holding up that window grill, that's a point where, place where this can crack and fall off. So the choices are abandon it, which is probably the best idea, torch weld it or TIG weld it to fix it, which if you were just almost done and just desperate to get it finished, wouldn't be a bad way to go because you could camouflage it or try to forge weld it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this really hot up to welding temperature. I'm going to put a little flux in there. I'm going to try and keep my heat very controlled so this is cool and this is cool and I'm going to try and forge weld that real quick. So that's at a very high welding heat. We've actually eroded some of that away which isn't good. Lots of light little taps and we might be able to save that. Unfortunately, I've lost most sign of my center punch mark by now. And since we're upsetting this, I can kind of salvage some of my overheat there. So I think we might have saved that. It won't be as good as the ones I did with the method that I'm more used to. But I don't know that the mistakes with this were really due to the technique as much as the fact that I just have not practiced that technique. But I think it, in the long run it took me every bit as long to do that corner 
as it did for me to do the other corners with the technique I'm used to. But we ended up with a very nice looking corner here. From all outward appearances my forge weld looks good. I don't see a cold shut there anymore. I want to be very careful with that throughout the rest of the process though because I'm going to have to pound on this and that's when it's going to really want to break off. So I'll be very careful when I bend this next point. So for those of you who has asked me about that technique and suggested that I try it, there it is. I've tried it. Clearly I need more practice with it if I'm going to use that regularly but I don't think I am intrigued enough by it to abandon the more traditional way of doing an upset square corner. It works fine. It doesn't take that long. I know what to expect from it. But if you like this technique, by all means explore it. It's not, not that it's a bad technique, it's just not the one that I choose to use. But it will work. I got a good corner. I had to fuss with it. I had to fix it. Because I know how to forge weld, I was able to fix it, so that helps. But now we need to go on and finish this bar. So I have two bars that are exactly the same length, and that is quite critical. And we'll have to do some comparison. But if we're using our hook rulers, and we're measuring all of our points as we go, there should be no surprises when we're done other than the shrinkage or contraction as the bars cool a little bit and we'll look at them after they're cooled and we'll see if they're all exactly the same size or not. Well I think I'm going to wrap that up for today. The low battery light is flashing on the camera. The sun is setting behind the tree so it's going to start getting darker in the shop and harder to see what we're doing. I still have to finish the second bar and make sure it looks exactly like this one. It's easy to make one alike, it's hard to make two alike, but we need two alike for this project. If you're following along, make sure you make yourself some hook rulers. It'll make your life a little bit easier. And then you can start on these bars. Hopefully you've already done a full-size layout. I don't really expect that most people are following along. We're just looking at techniques, and you can use these techniques for lots of other projects. They're not unique to this project. We did not do allow material for slit, drift, or punched holes, because I plan to drill the holes for the pickets in this. And we will discuss that on the next one. We will also discuss a decorative end on this for mounting this to the building. And that will all be on the next one. But I will discuss how you do a test piece and test your measurements for slit drift holes so you know what kind of material to allow. Because it's important to allow for that in your original bar length. And we will talk about that on the next video when we finish this. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed the video.